Okay. Um, we have here our next uh, speaker to uh, talk on process graphs, past, present, and future. Perhaps we, we can see him uh, live. Uh, Raymond, where are you? Oh, there. There you are. Here. So, okay. Good morning. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Raymond. Uh, good morning. Let me just introduce our speaker. Raymond Artan is a professor of chemical engineering, university fellow, and current vice chancellor for research and innovation of De La Salle University, and an academician of the Philippine National Academy of Science and Technology. His main research interest is the development of mathematical models for sustainable industrial systems. He has more than 380 publications with an H index of 43 in the Scopus database and ranks among the top researchers in the world in the subject areas of process integration or PI and process systems engineering or PSE based on Google Scholar citations. He received his BS, MS in chemical engineering and PhD in mechanical engineering from De La Salle University. He's the editor in chief of process integration and optimization for sustainability of Springer Nature, subject editor of sustainable production and consumption from Elsevier and ICME, associate editor of cleaner engineering and technology also from Elsevier and an editorial board member of Clean Technologies and Environmental Policy from Springer Nature. He is the author of the books Process Integration Approaches in Planning Carbon Management Networks from the CRC Press and Input Output Models for Sustainable Industrial Systems from Springer Nature, and editor of the books Recent Advances in Sustainable Process Design and Optimization from Wiley and process design strategies for biomass conversion systems from World Scientific. He has received multiple scientific awards from government and scientific organizations in the Philippines. And also the Paase 2017 Co-Lectorship Awardee in Engineering. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, to speak on the process graphs, past, present, and future, Dr. Raymond R. Tan. Thanks very much, Alvin. Uh, good morning, Pastor colleagues. It's an honor to be introduced by your former PhD advisor, and uh, we, Alvin and I, go back a long way. However, since I have developing country internet connectivity, we thought it would be better to use a pre-recorded slideshow, and then I'll get back to the audience for the Q&A. So can you request the, the conference team to play? Okay. Uh, thank you, Raymond. Uh, there's a quick plug, and here it is. Good morning. My name is Raymond Tan. I'm Professor of Chemical Engineering at De La Salle University, and my talk today is entitled Process Graphs, Past, Present, and Future. The talk is based partly on a perspective paper that I wrote with colleagues from Hungary, the Philippines, and Malaysia, and which was published last year in Current Opinion in Chemical Engineering. The main topic of my talk is the process graph or p-graph framework and we'll look at the past, present, and future of this computing framework. Let's begin with the past. P-graph was originally developed in the context of chemical engineering which is dedicated to the problem of mass production of chemicals from various raw materials using a network of chemical and physical processes that are put in sequence as shown on screen. The main design problem for chemical engineers is to put together technologies to allow conversion of raw materials into marketable products and to do it in a profitable way. 
within chemical engineering, there's a branch known as process systems engineering, which is dedicated to the development and use of various mathematical and computer tools for engineering problems. And PGRAPH is one of these tools. This is a graph theoretic framework to address what is known as the process network synthesis or PNS problem and was developed by Friedler and Fan for the purpose of developing a network of operations that can be translated eventually into an actual industrial plant out of technology building blocks. At the heart of the PGRAPH methodology is a bipartite graph consisting of n-type nodes to represent streams of material or energy and O-type nodes to represent processes or operations which convert inputs into outputs. The PGRAPH framework begins with five actions that act as foundation for the development of key algorithms that comprise this methodology. The main algorithms are as follows. Maximal structure generation, or MSG, is the algorithm which assembles process building blocks rigorously into what you may think of as a master network, formerly known as a maximal structure. And uh, this maximal structure has an important feature in that it contains within it all possible designs that uh, can eventually be developed for a given problem. The second algorithm is solution structure generation or SSG. This is an enumeration algorithm which can identify all combinatorially or structurally feasible subsets of the maximal structure. And each of these solution structures represents a design alternative which can be evaluated and explored by engineers for consideration to be built into an actual plan. The third algorithm is accelerated branch and bound, or ABB, which is an algorithm which can economically evaluate the options available using SSG logic to have a very fast optimization by elimination of infeasible and redundant solutions. So let's have a look at a classical problem from PGRAPH literature. In this case, our problem is to design a plant to produce A using raw materials E, G, J, K, and L, and using seven processes which are shown in conventional block diagram form at the top of the screen, and shown in PGRAPH form in the inset at the bottom of the screen. The first problem we have is to assemble these building blocks into a master network or the so-called maximal structure which would produce product A using any of the raw materials which are available on the market. Application of MSG gives us the following structure on the left hand side of the screen and this is an algorithmically related or rather algorithmically generated structure and uh, not generated based on human knowledge which may have gaps and thus may result in human error. So that's an important feature. The next step now is out of this maximal structure we need to explore all possible combinatorially feasible structures which we can then further evaluate in the design problem. And you would initially think that with seven component processes you would have two raised to seven or 128 alternatives to explore. But if we use SSG we can initially identify these seven structures. We can identify another seven structures. And eventually, upon complete enumeration, we've identified 19 combinatorially feasible structures, each of which is a subset of the maximal structure, and each of which is a candidate plant design. So you would observe that we've gone from 128 alternatives down to 19 which is about an order of magnitude reduction in the search space. For much larger problems, as we've seen in the PGRAPH literature, the scaling down of the search space could be 
multiple orders of magnitude, a million fold or more reduction. The capability to enumerate all combinatorially feasible structures that has been shown can have very useful features because the machine generated set of options can often be counterintuitive or surprising. In other words, these are designs that a typical engineer drawing from his or her background knowledge may not be able to imagine and uh, thus uh, relying purely on human expertise may miss some important solutions which have interesting properties such as higher energy efficiency or lower carbon footprint. So this is one of the important characteristics of using the PGRAPH methodology. PGRAPH software has evolved over multiple generations. The most accessible one is hosted by the University of Pannonia in Hungary and is accessible via pgraph.org uh, and uh, is open access. Now let me talk about my work using PGRAPH for conventional engineering problems, specifically thermal and energy engineering problems. I've done extensive work on what are known as polygeneration systems. This is a term which dates back to a 40-year-old NASA document and it means the production of electricity along with other side products such as steam, chilled water, hydrogen, chemicals and so on and so forth. And the logic behind polygeneration is that it is able to produce the products at a higher level of efficiency and lower emissions than having separate unintegrated processes that produce them in the same quantities. In 2014, I developed with some colleagues a PGRAPH model for optimizing abnormal operations in a polygeneration plant. The abnormal operations can occur, for example, when we have to shut down parts of the plant for repair or maintenance while keeping the rest of the plant running and trying to find the operating state that minimizes economic losses while repairs are being done. More recently, I've done work on PGRAPH models which allow for design of flexible plants. These are plants that are able to adjust operating states to account for seasonal product demand. And uh, this is an important feature because very often the assumption made is that the plant and its various components simply run at maximum capacity 24-7. And in real life, of course, that doesn't happen because plant operations are subject to the market variations. A couple of years ago, I published a couple of papers that integrate fuzzy set theory with process graphs in order to account for what are known as uh, soft constraints. In optimization, normally constraints are deterministic in the sense that if you set a limit of say 100, even a tiny violation of this constraint, if you go to 100.1, that is considered immediately an infeasible solution and thus is eliminated from further consideration. Soft constraints allow for small degrees of user-specified violations of such limits and are important because by doing so you're able to come up with much more robust solutions. And we did this for design of polygeneration plants in 2017-2018. Earlier this year we took the same fuzzy PGRAPH methodology and extended it not for the design problem but for the operation problem. And we took the case of a polygeneration plant with a hydroelectric prime mover in a hypothetical off-grid remote community and we considered how such a plant should be operated if there's a drought and the, the river flow rate is reduced and in such cases depending on the extent or severity of the drought you may have to switch off parts of the plant and you would have to adjust the operating state of those which remain in operation. All the while, trying to maintain the outputs that are required by this remote village by way of electricity, drinking water, and ice for refrigeration needs. 
Next, I'll talk about PGraph Future. Process Graph has been used for a large range of network type problems, ranging in scale from uh, the smallest of the molecular scale. Chemical reactions have been modeled using PGraph. And at the opposite extreme, on a grand scale, entire economic systems of entire countries have also been represented in PGraph form. And this slide shows some of the past and uh, prospective work for which PGraph may be applied, which I discussed in a paper two years ago. Some of the work that I've done on non-engineering applications of PGraph include a 2015 paper in the Journal of Cleaner Production, where we use PGraph to represent the economy of an entire country, the Philippines in this case. The basis of this modeling approach is what is known in economics as the input-output model, which represents economic sectors as a process that produces a unique output while requiring specific inputs from other sectors. Input-output analysis also assembles such processes or sectors into a, an economic network, as shown at the bottom of the screen. And the economic network is a stylized representation of the real economy and allows for the analysis of, among other things, uh, you could forecast the effects of natural disasters or changes in technology and so on. And we showed that uh, by using PGraph in conjunction with input-output analysis, optimization can be done to minimize the adverse effects of uh, disasters and loss of natural resources. In late 2019 until earlier this year, I worked with some colleagues on the use of PGraph to represent ecosystem networks, which are graphical representations of ecosystems where relationships among species can be mapped out, whether these are trophic relationships where one species eats the other, or these are, for example, mutualistic or competitive relationships. These can be mapped in PGraph form. And what we showed in this paper, which we expect to be published shortly, is that we can use PGraph to identify critical components of the ecosystem and uh, in the context of ecosystem management, that kind of information is useful because it can allow resources to be prioritized for the more important parts of the ecosystem. Another recent work which uh, applies PGraph to a, a novel network is the use of PGraph for decision networks. In this work, which you may consider bordering on machine learning, we showed that PGraph can estimate or approximate the thought process of a human. So the input into the model is how a human expert ranks a small set of alternatives. And that is just ordinal information for four or five alternatives. And the, the human expert need not specify his or her thought processes in ranking these alternatives. We showed that we can use PGraph to approximate those thought processes via a decision model which can then be used to generalize the expertise of the human who, who just provided quick inputs by way of ordinal information. Now I go to my conclusions. PGraph is important because number one, network structure and discrete choices across network structure typically has a stronger influence on system performance as compared to variations of performance within a given network structure. Thus, the capability to enumerate these networks is very important in many problems. This enumeration capability is important for problem analysis by engineers and analysts, and also important for decision support, because typically the analysts would not be the final decision makers, but they would need to convince their superiors, for example, CEOs of corporations or politicians who make uh, policies for entire cities or countries. The arguments can be made much more persuasive by showing that different alternatives have been explored 
to the fullest extent. In conclusion, PGRAPH is a powerful computational framework for solving PNS and PNS-like problems. And even though this uh, framework was originally developed as a chemical engineering tool, it has been shown in recent work, including some of mine, that it is also useful for what are known as generalized process networks, both within and outside of engineering applications. I'd like to end by acknowledging some colleagues, and especially Professor Friedler, the father of PGRAPH himself. Uh, Professor Kathleen Aviso has been co-author of most of my PGRAPH work, and Professor Hong Lung Lam, who introduced me to PGRAPH uh, close to a decade ago. So thanks to all three of you. And a final quick plug, I'm involved in the management of these four journals. We accept uh, contributions where there are computational and sustainability aspects of uh, engineering work. And in conclusion, I'll be happy to take questions now, or you may email me for queries after today's talk. Thank you once again. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, uh, Raymond, for that uh, excellent talk. Uh, you did, uh, you know, presented some new, you know, uh, analytical tools uh, to deal especially with, uh, you know, green uh, engineering problems. So thank you uh, for that. Indeed, uh, you have come a long way. You used to have hair before. Uh, I'm I'm not party to that. <laughs> so sorry. Anyway, we are going to take uh, the questions uh, uh, later on uh, when we finish. Uh, you know the next talk by another distinguished uh, you know speaker. Um,